As you can see here, when it comes to this product, there is no shortage of information, reviews, and affiliate links on the internet uh, between web pages and YouTube. And uh, here I'm just looking at a few of these. And um, there was no shortage. 1,338 ratings on Amazon is impressive. Uh, lots of listings on YouTube. And as I said, um, most of these will give you uh, an affiliate link so you can get 10% off. And uh, why wouldn't you? you'd like to purchase one of these for yourself, I do have a discount code. You can follow the link below. To their credit, Weatherflow runs a forum for the Tempest and for their other products. And they don't curate the forum, so it's a really good place to pick up some unbiased viewpoints and get an overview of some of the issues that current owners are having and um, for example a couple of the uh, issues that I was having such as wind gauge accuracy you can have a um, good overview and there's there's quite an in-depth discussion and I think the good thing about what you're going to get from these is if you're having issues there's a lot of potential for um, mitigations offered by other users that have gone through the same thing. So um, take a look at the forum. Another one, for example, is uh, the battery issues that uh, I am currently encountering and came up with some rather red-green city-of-the-pants uh, solutions for, which you can see here when I posted my picture in the forum um, with mixed results. We have a vehicle that's configured for uh, testing equipment. It was originally meant for radios. We've adapted it here and you can see where the Tempest has been mounted here and some of the test site locations were up at the Columbia Ice Fields and you'll see here the maps of uh, what the locations were and some pictures of those locations themselves. We were comparing uh, a couple of the mounts to the Ecowit which you saw in our previous video review of that unit. We'll start by looking at uh, problems that I thought I was having with um, apparent wind velocity and direction. But you can see here by looking at this image with the uh, weather stations moving around on these poles that uh, my contact at uh, Tempest pointed out to me that um, wobble in the pole from the mount can have significant effects on the uh, results. So then what I did was I brought the Tempest down, put it in the yard, pointed it uh, directionally toward north, and then I stuck that fan that you can see here blowing into it on high. And uh, that far from scientific uh, seat of the pants experiment did not return very good results. So the next best thing I can think of for testing this uh, Tempest will be following the advice of somebody in the forum. They mounted it on their vehicle and they drove. What we will not have confidence in will be the direction. But first of all, I'm gonna correlate uh, some of the settings. So we'll check inside and see what we're doing here for outdoor temperature from the EcoWet and we're looking at 1.9. We'll check the hub because the hub for the Tempest, blue means that it's communicating with some device that's on Bluetooth, so that confirms it's probably talking to the phone that's in the vehicle. And then what we're gonna do is go back around because I'm by myself, I don't have an assistant to work at the desk today and we'll just check what we're going to do is correlate the uh, speed and a bit of direction with the compass from the inReach here. And 
and hopefully this phone is now talking to the hub and that's how we're gonna correlate all that data. Now we're gonna go for a drive. And then all the data disappears from my phone. Now, here's what they tell you. If you'll see here, that uh, reddish orange glow means that it's not talking to anything. So you go to the phone and you launch the Tempest app. And when the hub turns blue, <coughs> it means it's talking to the phone but clearly it's not. Now when you're not connected to Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth is the method where the hub uh, talks to the Tempest and sends the information to your phone via the app and the app doesn't um, require you to have Bluetooth paired with the hub on your phone. So just make sure under all the apps that the app for the Tempest is allowed to access Bluetooth and the rest will be automatic. We're going to start by powering on the Tempest and when you get a bunch of rapid flashes that I think means that it's paired then we power up the hub and then the orange light means that it cannot find either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth so it's not connected through either. Power up your phone and with Bluetooth enabled launch the Tempest app and if the hub turns blue and you're not getting any data that means that the hub does see your phone there it does know that the app is launched but for some reason the app can't get the data from the hub. Now we're going to look at the Android device and you can see here that Bluetooth is turned off so you need to enable Bluetooth and again make sure that the app is enabled uh, in terms of being able to access Bluetooth so it can turn itself on and then um, go to your apps then once you're into your app interface and you've got your Tempest there we're gonna launch that and um, what you saw was that the hub did know that the app got activated which means then that the phone is allowing uh, the hub to interact with it and the app is allowing Bluetooth but for some reason again it can't pull the uh, data from the hub
Here's one of the primary reasons I am mostly interested in wind direction and velocity because we do have a couple of trees that are hanging right over our driveway and this is facing to the west and what happens with west winds are these trees if they were to be blown over they would go right over our driveway and uh, hit my vehicles and then um, I would have the consequences so that's why I wanted uh, something that would give me reliable wind direction and velocities so that if I needed to, I can move the vehicles out of the way of these trees over here, which would go right over the tops of my vehicles. And in our area, this often happens.